Hello there. Thank you for attending this presentation today on distributing Conda environments. My name is Michael Grant. I'm VP of Services at Anaconda, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to talk to you about this today. I figured I'd better start, though, with a little bit of motivation because I understand this is not a hot topic like deep learning or natural language processing, and there aren't going to be a lot of pretty pictures like you might see in a visualization or dashboarding presentation. So I thought it would be important to talk about why we're here. Uh, because it may not be immediately obvious why the average individual practitioner needs to know how to do this. Um, and yet I would argue that it's something that all of us who work regularly with Conda environments should probably know about. Uh, but let's start with what we all know. Uh, the Conda package manager is great at creating highly customized Python and R environments. It's dependency metadata. The metadata ensures that I get all the packages I need. So I ask for the packages I want and it installs all of the dependencies, whether I knew about them or not. Um, it allows me to pin the precise versions of the packages I care about. And then Conda can just give me the latest compatible versions of everything else. And so every data scientist and every data science team administrator can tailor environments to precisely serve their needs. And so let's say I've done that. Let's say that I have spent quite a bit of time iterating on my environment, trying different versions of Python. I was trying to decide between PyTorch and TensorFlow, say, um, and I've, I've really spent time curating this environment and I'm finally happy with the results I'm getting. The model is performing how I expect it to perform. Well, now that I have that perfect environment, how do I share it with my team members? or even an entire department. Maybe I'm an administrator, and again, I'm trying to standardize the environments that my team uses, and I wanna share that environment with everyone. What's the easiest way for me to do that? Or maybe I am an individual practitioner, but what I need to do is parallel machine learning or deep learning training on large data sets. So I'm gonna distribute this environment to 100 different machines on, a mach on, a, on some sort of compute cluster that I've been given access to. How do I do that? Um, or maybe my model is, is one of those governed models that I need to precisely archive so that six months, 12 months down the road, I can recover the full compute environment and rerun the model again for any sort of governance purposes. So what are my tool, what tools are at my disposal if I need, you know, if any of these scenarios apply to me? Now, if I'm a Conda expert, I probably think I already have an answer here. I can just use Conda list export or Conda env export to export a specification for the environment. And this, this includes the exact names, versions, and builds of all the packages in the environment. I can take that environment specification and give it to somebody else or put it on a different machine and run the corresponding conda create command and boom, I've got the environment there. So that's great. And actually that works really well in many situations, but there's some situations where it simply does not work. For example, what if the target machine doesn't have conda installed? So now I have to go through the process of installing a Conda environment with Conda in it so that I can then Conda install my target environment. Um, for 100 nodes, I might get a little tired of that. Uh, what if the recipient is a Conda novice? One of the nice things about the Anaconda distribution is we supply easy to use GUI based or shell based installers that install a curated set of packages that get you up and running doing con common data science activities and data science and, and AI machine learning activities without having to know how to use Conda. And so for many of our users, they never actually get on the command line and Conda install anything. What if that applies to the people that you wanna give this environment to? What if the packages are no longer available in my repository? So now I'm thinking six months, nine months down the line, I wanna recover this environment. Um, I try to use my Conda create command, but, but an overzealous administrator has has removed some of the older packages from the repository and I can't install it anymore. Or maybe they needed to remove them because there was a security vulnerability, which applies to new models, but for old models I need to reproduce, I still need that old package. Or maybe the target computers are air-gapped. They don't have access to the repository that we're talking about. In all of these situations, having an environment specification just isn't enough. So again, what are my options? And today we're gonna to talk about two. Constructor and Conda Pack. These, these are two freely available open source tools that bundle Conda environments into shareable, transportable, archivable assets. Constructor is, to build, is for building user-friendly custom installers very similar to the ones that you might be familiar with if you've downloaded Anaconda or Miniconda. And Conda Pack is used to provide simpler, 
compact archives using standard archive file formats um, for lower level or more automated approaches, or maybe just for people who are command line jockeys and are comfortable there. So it's, it's for distribu distribution and management of environments at a lower level. So we're gonna look at both of these tools and I want you to decide which one might be more appropriate for your use cases. First, let's talk about Constructor. As I said, Constructor builds custom installers from valid Conda environments. It gives users the same installer experience they're already accustomed to. For Mac and Windows, we use standard GUI installers. The, for the Mac, we're using the standard Mac OS package utilities. For Windows, the well-known and, and, and industry standard NSYS installer platform is what we use there. And for Linux and Mac, we also offer a shell-based install. And so the idea is that what the installer looks like a standard shell script, but embedded inside it is the binary data needed to create the environment. Constructor allows you to customize the installer with obviously a custom set of packages, but also you can do things like modify the Conda configuration settings that will be installed with the environment. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. You can even supply your own logos and branding for your installers. So the way it works is it reads a file called construct.yaml, which provide that which includes the specification for the environment that you want to create. And then it calls Conda in what we call a dry run mode. So it doesn't actually create a copy of the environment, but it does run Conda and fully resolve the, the specification. So it gets exact versions and builds of every package that it needs and all the dependencies. It downloads any packages it doesn't already have, and then it combines them into an OS dependent executable installer format. And the results look, well, I, they look like what you would expect from an installer, right? So I've got the Windows example on the bottom left and the Mac example on the top right, and in the middle is a shell-based install that I'm running from a command line. Now I'm gonna show you an example in just a second here that uses three of the more advanced options uh, for Constructor that are all optional, but, uh, but they can be useful in some circumstances. One of them is Conda RC. This is what lets me provide custom Conda configuration settings that will be installed into the environment. This is really useful, for example, if I want to point Conda to an internal repository. Uh, so for example, if I have Anaconda Team Edition or Artifactory installed, and that's where I want my users to get new packages from, I can configure Conda to look there instead of Anaconda's default channels. Um, similarly, the channels remap facility allows me to take packages from one repository, such as the Anaconda default, and rewrite the metadata so that they appear to have come from the internal customer repository like Team Edition or Artifactory. So this is useful if I want to build an installer in one place and provide it to users in another department, for example. Uh, who might have access to a different repository that I, per, that I don't have ready access to. And then exclude, we're gonna exclude the Anaconda meta package, which seems kind of funny, but it turns out if you understand Conda internals, you know that Anaconda itself, the package called Anaconda, doesn't actually have any code in it. It's just a meta package that pulls in a precise set of common data science and machine learning packages like pandas and matplotlib and numpy and so forth. So by removing that meta package, we leave all those useful packages in place. This makes it easier for users to further customize their environment um, as they go along. So uh, again, this is what our specification looks like. We're calling our environment sorta conda. <laughs> Uh, and we're using all of these advanced features. So uh, without further ado, let's go to the demo. So as you see, I've got uh, Mac on the top right, Linux on the top left, Windows in the middle, and I'm gonna run all three and watch them go. So what's gonna happen in each of these three cases is that constructor will run Conda to solve the environment and it, will, it would, if needed to, download any additional packages. Uh, it doesn't need to in this case because I've already run this uh, constructor once, so they're already in the cache. And so now uh, it's, con it's, it's constructing the individual installers. The Mac, on the Mac case, it's actually creating both a shell-based installer and uh, uh, an installer for a UI-based installer. The Linux one is done. So I'm actually gonna run it and I'm gonna show you what happens. Uh, so let's run it uh, right here. Oh, it's called Sortaconda, excuse me. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of 
preset it to install right here in my demo directory. So it's going to unpack the binaries, all 300 packages, and it's going to run Conda to install it. And these are done, or this one's finished actually. So I'm going to run the Mac, the Windows GUI, just so that you can see it in action. And uh, once my virtual machine is done, okay, so that's what the Windows GUI looks like. Okay, and then I'm going to run this one as well. Uh, just so you can see what the Mac UI looks like. We're not going to go any further than this on these uh, because, well, I mean, you kind of know how that's going to look. Um, so I'll shut these two down. Okay. Come on, buddy. Yes, I want to quit. All right. So in the meanwhile, let's go back to Linux and watch what's happening. So it's extracted all 300 packages and it's solving the cond environment and it's doing a standard Conda environment creation. Um, so let's take a look at it. It shouldn't uh, take too much longer. Uh, but I do just, while we're, while we're waiting, um, just to summarize, each of these three operating systems had the exact same construct.yaml file. Uh, and it does have some Windows specific information in it, but that information is ignored on the Mac and the Linux side. Um, and in the end, it built uh, appropriate installers for each of the platforms. Okay, so we're done here. So I'm gonna take a quick look at the environment. And sure enough, it has all of the packages that I want. And actually, if I look at it, it says that they came from repo.company.com. So it did want to ask for it, rewrote the metadata so that it appears that the uh, packages were installed from the internal repository. So that's constructor. Let's go back to my presentation and let's move on to Conda Pack. So Conda Pack creates a simple standard format archive like a tarball or a zip file. Uh, and so if you're thinking about it, you might say, well, why not just use tar or zip directly and build a tarball myself? And the reason you don't wanna do that is that it turns out that Conda environments are actually not relocatable. So if I were to move my Conda environment from one directory to another, just with a simple move command, or by tarring it up and moving it and unpacking it into a different location, it could render it partially or completely inoperable. And that's because, again, Conda packages themselves are not relocatable out of the box. What Conda does during the install process is that it actually adjusts the package dynamically so that it will correctly operate at the install location. And so you need to do that if you're going to do, if you're, if you're going to install a package on a different platform somehow. So Condapack solves this in one of two ways. In normal mode, it adds a script to your environment called Conda Unpack that can be run after you unpack the environment that reproduces that relocation logic and makes all the necessary adjustments. If you know in advance where the pack, where the environment is going to be installed, then Conda Pack can actually pre-adjust all of the packages so that as long as you unpack that archive in exactly the location you said, no further in post-install script is going to be required. And uh, in a recent development, a pre-release version of it, but it will be in a tag release soon, is that we now have native support for Cloudera parcels in Conda Pack as well. Turns out the file format is extremely similar. We just needed to add a little bit of metadata and set some standard directory structures and we were all done that with that. <laughs> Excuse me. So the calling convention can be as simple as Conda Pack dash N and then the name of the environment. <clears throat> and it has a few other options to customize things a bit. Instead of naming the environment, I could provide uh, the full path to the environment if I wanted to. I can change the format. I can use tar, or zip, compress tar, and so forth. And parcels, of course. I can change the output name or the file name. Uh, I can, if, 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 again, if I know the destination directory, I can specify that with a dest prefix path. And I can actually exclude files from the archive if I know I'm not going to need them at the destination. A common thing to do, for example, is to exclude static libraries or even the byte compiled versions of the Python code to save some space. Those aren't strictly necessary at the destination, so it might be worthwhile to exclude them. And then if my exclude patterns are a little bit too uh, inclusive, I can actually use the include command to put some more specific files back into the archive. So those are some of the useful examples. For parcels, um, the, the 
I just use the double dash format parcel to, to create the parcels and then there are some adjustments that I can make. And generally, if you are building parcels, hopefully you know what the uh, parcel, dist uh, parcel root directory is or in the parcel distribution. In other words, the, the version of Linux on which your Cloudera cluster is installed. And so you, need, you may need to make some adjustments to some of those optional settings in order to get parcels to work. All right, um, unpacking. Conda ar pack archive is relatively straightforward. You move the archive to the destination machine, you create the target directory, unpack the archive into that directory, and you activate. Um, and then if you're using the normal mode, you need to run that Conda unpack script. Um, and that's it. The environment's now fully usable in the new location. So back to the command lines for demo. Okay, so this is here. What we've done is we've created a small environment called pack test that um, on Linux, and you can see what the packages are here. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to use the simple command test and just let, oh, silly me, that's the wrong command. <laughs> Conda pack and pack test, there we go. So now it's going to build the environment for me. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna run it one more time because I forgot to give you some example exclude commands. So let me finish up this environment. And then I'm gonna remove that. Okay, and then I'm gonna do it again. Exclude PYC and exclude .a. So those are excluding the byte compiled um, Python code and the static libraries that I'm not likely to need. And you can see it's going faster because it has less to pack. And not surprisingly, that it's, it's also smaller. Um, and while I'm here, I will just go ahead and show you that I can build parcels with the same with just one small adjustment, but it does create a custom file name for this case. And if I look at that parcel real quickly, I will, I will see See tar tfc pack test 2020. Okay, you can take a look at that. And at the end, you see that the parcel metadata has been added to that. But we're not going to actually unpack this one. We are, however, going to uh, unpack the other one. So what we'll do is we'll just do this tar tfz um, pack test.tar.gz, and then we're going to unpack it into this new directory I just created. Actually, I should change this to an X. All right, it shouldn't take us too long. And then I will activate the environment. Okay, and then I will unpack it, run the unpack script, and boom, I'm done. So now I can run Python. I can look at the prefix just to confirm that I am in the directory that I want to, and I can import pandas, wait a couple seconds for the import to finish, and then I can look at the version. All is well there, and I can take a list of the environment, and sure enough, it has all the same packages that I had before. So that's kind of pack. Pretty straightforward, huh? Uh, I hope you agree, but there are some caveats I want to share with you. If I so I go back to my presentation. So first of all, perhaps not surprisingly, Conda must be installed on the source machine. Uh, secondly, Conda pack archives are not cross-platform. You have to uh, uninstall. You have to install the archive on the same operating system as you created it. So you can't build a Windows archive on Linux, for example. Once an archive is unpacked, it is not relocatable. So please don't be confused. Conopack does not create relocatable archives. It creates archives that can be installed anywhere. And I think that's a, a subtle, but it's an important difference. Furthermore, once you've unpacked an environment, Condipack's generally not going to be able to repack it because of the it, it because of the way it depends on the, the original Conda packages themselves to, to build that relocatability or that installability. Um, furthermore, it's often not well suited for archiving old environments. So I, I want to discourage you from thinking of it as a backup tool. Um, unless you're using it when the environment was created or as soon as you're sure that the environment is stable, that's a good time to run Conda Pack. Ha after having used it for six months and possibly clearing your local package cache, 
Condipac likely won't work in that situation, all right? And uh, finally, as I pointed out, parcel creation is a new capability. I, if, if, that's, if that's something that's useful to you, please feel free to give us feedback on that um, in the issue tracker for Condipac. So let's wrap up. Today, we've looked at two different tools for building redistributable, transportable archives of Conda environments. Constructor is great when an installer is the right choice, when you want that sort of installer-like feel, GUI or shell-based. Uh, Conda Pack is a lighter weight, more automatable solution, although I should point out that, uh, that installers can often be scripted in, the, you know, in execution as well, but still, if you do need to automate something, you might want to give Conda Pack greater consideration. Both provide the precise reproducibility that you need, that you get exactly the Conda packages, versions, and builds that you need for your environment. Um, neither require Conda to be pre-installed at the destination, and that's important. So, which one's right for you? I uh, leave it to you, but please give them a shot. Go visit the websites, read the documentation, try them out, file issues. Let us know what you think. And thank you for your time.